Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Next Gen, MagniX breaks records and concludes NASA test campaign. Pal V and Netherlands Aerospace achieve rotor blade development. AM SpaceX sets sights on 25 Starship launches in 2025. And I'm your host, Holland Lee. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Next Gen program, a weekly news program covering the next generation of flight, from electric power to vertical lift, uncrewed vehicles, and everything in between. Let's get into today's stories. MagniX breaks records and concludes NASA test campaign. MagniX's Magni 650 electric propulsion unit recently completed its extensive NASA test campaign. This moves the device one step closer to achieving the world's first electric engine certification. The Magni 650 conducted testing at NASA's Electric Aircraft Testbed, or NEAT, in Sandusky, Ohio. It was able to provide a maximum continuous 700 kilowatts of power at an altitude of 30,000 feet. The EPU will now be moving forward to NASA's Electrified Powertrain Flight Demo Project. This will involve replacing one of the four engines on MagniX's de Havilland-7 test aircraft with a Magni 650 electric unit. The final stage of the NASA EPFD program will substitute a second turbine engine for the Magni 650, intended to reduce fuel consumption by nearly 40 percent in normal conditions. Initial test flights are slated for 2026. MagniX is already working with Harbor Air on a project to convert de Havilland Beaver seaplanes to electric power. In April, Harbor Air signed a letter of intent to purchase 50 Magni 650 engines. This duo already gained a spot in electric aviation history, with a Harbor Air Beaver retrofitted with a MagniX electric engine in December 2019, which became the world's first fully electric commercial aircraft to take flight. After the break, Redmond PD celebrates new BV loss waiver for drone ops. For over 30 years, the massive sport plane resource guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all new digital sport plane resource guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated and even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon, www.sportplane.com. Challenge test, get your remote pilot certificate, and start earning money. Well, flying a drone is a great tool that can open up new business opportunities for anyone. Realtor, insurance adjuster, videographer, or commercial weekend drone warrior, you need to fly legally. Whether you're pursuing your initial Part 107 remote pilot certificate or you need a renewal, King Schools has a course just for you. So start learning today at kingschools.com. Welcome back. Now for some shorter stories in our next Gen Minute. Redmond PD celebrates new BV loss waiver for drone ops. Redmond police are celebrating the FAA's decision to grant them a beyond visual line of sight waiver for expanded drone operations. This helps to ease tensions caused by the department's staff shortage. Redmond Police Chief Daryl Lowe says it will reduce their staffing by 50 percent. The new waiver allows Redmond Police drone pilots to fly their system outside of visual range, which is typically prohibited under standard regulations. Certified officers can now pilot response missions without requiring a secondary observer. Ruko U11 Mini Drone Introduced Ruko announced the new release of the foldable U11 Mini Drone. With this new drone, Ruko was thoughtful about what beginners need and designed it specifically for new users or novices. Its unique design with upgraded components combined with the user-friendly app interface makes it ideal for beginners. The U11 Mini is lightweight, portable, and folds into its carrying bag. It weighs in at just 235 grams, or 8.3 ounces, which eliminates the need for FAA registration and allows convenient and unrestricted flying. Business Jet Installs Starlink on Gulfstream G4 Business Jet Center said it recently completed two of the first Starlink installations on the Gulfstream G4 since it was awarded the STC in August. During the G4's most recent flight, passengers enjoyed download speeds of up to 285 megabits per second and were able to simultaneously stream three different movies with almost no latency. The feedback from both passengers and crew was universally positive, with some saying simply, game changer. 
Swift's high-altitude platform reaches 56,000 feet. Swift Engineering announced that its Swift Ultra Long Endurance aircraft reached an altitude of 55,904 feet MSL, more than doubling its previous altitude, in a flight that lasted more than 24 hours. The craft took off from and landed at Spaceport America in Truth or Consequences, New Mexico. The endurance of the flight opens up new possibilities for scientific research, environmental monitoring, and aerospace and defense applications, with the aircraft deployed as a high altitude platform station aircraft. That's it for our Next Gen Minute. Now back to the rest of the news. PAL V and Netherlands Aerospace Achieve Rotor Blade Development. PAL V and the Netherlands Aerospace Center announced the completion of the development phase of the rotor blades for the PAL V Liberty, a significant step in moving toward the production phase of the flying car. The collaboration between PAL V and the Netherlands' premier Aerospace Research Institute took advantage of NLR's extensive experience in aerospace engineering and composite structures to tackle the development and hone the design of the rotor blades. The blades are 20% more efficient with less drag compared to equivalent blades yielding improved performance and fuel economy. The set of two blades measures about 11 meters or 36 feet in length, yet weigh only 35.8 kilograms or about 79 pounds. With the refined design of the blades completed, PAL-V has created a small-scale assembly facility near its headquarters where the company is getting ready to begin production of the Liberty. Henri de Vry, senior scientist at NLR, said, quote, we are thrilled to have reached another milestone with our new technology for high-end composite rotor blades. Together with PAL-V, we've overcome technical challenges and ensured our rotor blades are ready for industrial production." End quote. Gyroplane rotor blades are brought in motion by the airflow to create lift instead of by using a motor. This is called autorotation. After these messages, SpaceX sets sights on 25 Starship launches in 2025. Welcome back. SpaceX sets sights on 25 Starship launches in 2025. SpaceX is aiming to increase its number of allowed launches from 5 to 25 next year. SpaceX's launch license set in 2022 currently permits five annual launches from its Starbase test facility in Boca Chica, Texas. As of November 19th, four had been used with one remaining. The 25 launch allowance reflects the long-term ambitions of company CEO Elon Musk, who hopes to send hundreds of Starship missions to space before the end of the decade. The launches will begin at the Starbase test facility as normal, then could progress to floating platforms in the Gulf of Mexico, Pacific Ocean, Indian Ocean, or various other locations. To earn this right, however, SpaceX will need to obtain either a new or modified license from the FAA. The FAA is reviewing the environmental impacts of increasing the launch frequency, specifically regarding wildlife harm, air emissions, water quality, and noise pollution near the site. SpaceX has already been fined over $150,000 for related violations in previous launches. On November 20th, the agency released a new draft of its SpaceX Starship Environmental Assessment. It did not include a formal statement expressing the FAA's opinion on the potential increase in launch frequency, but it seemed to find no significant issues with it. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.